Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our distinguished guests, the Governor of the State of Haryana, Sri Jagannath Pahadia, the Chief Minister, Sri Bhupendra Singh Huda, the President of India. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem. Please be seated. I now request Professor C. Rajkumar, Vice Chancellor, OP Jindal Global University, to deliver the welcome address and introduce to us the theme of this conference. I have great pleasure in welcoming the President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, to OP Jindal Global University to inaugurate the conference on the future of Indian universities, comparative perspectives on higher education reforms for a knowledge society. I have had the honor and privilege of meeting the President at the Rashtrapati Bhavan on 15th November 2012 to invite him to inaugurate this conference. I was personally moved by his humility and grace and most importantly his eagerness to reflect upon and address the challenges facing higher education system in India. He kindly accepted our invitation to inaugurate the conference and we are truly grateful for his acceptance. President Mukherjee has been at the vanguard of critical reforms that are being initiated in the higher education sector, motivating and inspiring universities, regulatory bodies, and indeed the government. Sir, we would like to extend a warm welcome to you, to OP Jindal Global University, and to this conference, which is organized to address some of the challenges that are faced by the Indian university system. We are fortunate to host you at our campus. And this day will indeed go down as a red letter day in the annals of the history of this university. Everyone in this audience is inspired by your very presence, demonstrating your personal commitment and the highest priority you have accorded to higher education reforms. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the Governor of Haryana, Sri Jagannath Paraharya, for his kind presence on this occasion. We thank him for his encouragement and support to our university. I would like to Warmly welcome the Chief Minister of Haryana, Sri Bhupinder Singh Huda. He has provided the strongest possible encouragement and support to our university right from the beginning. Everything that we have achieved over these years was possible due to the support of the Chief Minister as well as the Government of Haryana. This demonstrates his leadership and commitment to making the state of Haryana a knowledge centre. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the Union Minister for Human Resource Development, Sri Pallam Raju, who is mandated with the onerous responsibility of steering the growth of education in India. I truly appreciate his presence and thank you for his encouragement and support. I would like to extend a hearty welcome to Professor Lauren Robel, Provost Indiana University. Professor Robel is one of the most extraordinary and inspiring leaders of higher education in the world. She has a passionate commitment to institution building in India and has been part of her endeavor from the very beginning. We are grateful to her for all what she has done and continues to do in her efforts to raise the quality of higher education in India. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our dear Chancellor, Mr. Naveen Jindal. I very vividly remember the day when I met Mr. Jindal in November 2006 upon the introduction of the then Union Law Minister, Mr. H.R. Bharadwaj to persuade him to support the idea of creating a not-for-profit, global, multidisciplinary, research-oriented university. Mr. Jindal not only supported this idea, but also made three extraordinary commitments. First, that he will contribute to be 500 crores to establish this university. 
Second, that he will do this in a not-for-profit manner. And third, that he will ensure that academic freedom and institutional autonomy is maintained. Chancellor Jindal has not only kept all his promises, but at all times gone beyond the call of duty to do everything possible to develop this university. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to bring to your attention that Chancellor Naveen Jindal's philanthropy extends the geographical boundaries of India. A few years ago, his alma mater, the School of Management at the University of Texas at Dallas in the US, was named as the Naveen Jindal School of Management in recognition of his outstanding contribution to philanthropy and public service. I would also like to mention that this contribution is a rarity for any Indian. Thank you, Naveen, for what you have done and for what you are doing for this university. Let us dream and aspire to make JGU as one of the top universities of the world in the years to come. And to you, dear members of the governing body, the Board of Management and the Academic Council of the University, a very warm welcome and a sincere appreciation to you for gracing this occasion. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the distinguished speakers who have come from around the world and India. I would like to welcome the judges, the, speakers of the, the Speaker of the Haryana Legislative Assembly, the ministers, MLAs, MPs, bureaucrats, diplomats, law enforcement officials, police officers, the district magistrate and the SP of Sonipat, the director of the police, as well as many other professors, speakers and participants who have come around the world and from India. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Madam Sabitri Jindal, the mother of Mr. Naveen Jindal, and wife of Chancellor Ms. Shalu Jindal and other family members, faculty, staff and my dear students. Much attention has been recently given to international rankings and benchmarks for assessing the quality of universities and where Indian universities stand in relation to their counterparts around the world. There is no doubt, regardless of whichever ranking one uses to assess the global standing of Indian universities, we have a long way to go. Beyond these rankings, whose methods can be questioned by some, there remains the more important issue. What future do Indian universities have? The five major themes that the conference hopes to discuss are 1. Institutional vision to transform the Indian University. The Indian University continues to be an institution which has not yet fully absorbed the contemporary realities of knowledge creation and its relevance for social transformation. If the demographic dividend that India has with 50% of its population less than 25 years of age, it is obviously critical to have a vision that is transformative for the youth of India to fulfill their aspirations. Second creativity and innovation to build world-class institutions. Indian universities must examine their substantive role and contributions to promoting creativity and innovation. In the course of a quantitative leap resulting in the establishment of 650 degree awarding institutions in India, quality and excellence has unfortunately suffered. Mediocrity has been institutionalized, leading to a lack of creativity and innovation in our institutions. Third, research and scholarship that can generate ideas for change. Indian universities will have to ensure that teaching and research go hand in hand. There is a lot that they need to be done to strike a balance between equally important objectives. Four, funding and resources that will attract best into academia. The question of funding of Indian universities is inevitably connected to the role of the state and regulatory bodies. There is a crying need for major reforms in Indian universities. The Indian university has a range of actors and all of them have to play a role. The one-size-fits-all policy that is currently adopted for funding and resource allocation is not suitable and needs re-examination. 5. Leadership and institution building for nation building. There is an urgent need in Indian universities to reflect upon the crisis of leadership and its inability to seek reforms relating to institution building. Leadership is central not only for providing an institutional vision that will garner and galvanize academic consciousness among faculty and students to fulfill the goals and aspirations of the university, but also to reflect upon the larger role of the Indian university that connects the university with the professions. Leadership is also about taking responsibility and being accountable for one's decisions. The future of Indian universities will depend upon our ability to create and nurture transformational institutions that will inspire young minds with the spirit of inquiry and instill in them the flame of imagination. I would like to end my speech with the words of our dear President, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, which was the inspiration for this conference. At the 58th convocation of the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur, that was held last year, our President, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, observed, and I quote, I feel it necessary to share with you my sense of dismay on seeing in recent reports that not a single Indian university or institute of higher learning, including the premier IITs, figure on the list of top 200 rated universities of the world. 
Now, you may question the survey, but to, my, but to my mind, the more important question, why? Why are we, a rising economic superpower, not able to promote our standards to be rated indisputably among the top 10 or even top 50 or top 100? Unquote. And two days ago, at the 90th convocation of my own alma mater, the University of Delhi, President Mukherjee observed, if we are to redefine the way education is imparted by our educational institutions, the time is now. According to an international ranking of universities, no university is one of the top 200. This, you would agree, is simply unacceptable. We must develop our universities into global leaders, and for that, the best practices in other countries should be carefully studied and adopted with necessary changes to suit, this, suit our conditions." Unquote. This is the vision that has brought us all together to organize this conference. We hope that the OPG Global University will fulfill this aspirations of President Mukherjee, the vision of Chancellor Mr. Naveen Jindal, and uphold the noble ideals for which his father, Sri O. Prakash Jindal, stood for. Thank you very much. Welcome to OPG Global University. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor, for a substantive welcome address. I now have the honor <coughs> to request Sri Naveen Jindal. Chancellor of the OP Jindal Global University to deliver the Chancellor's remarks. His Excellency, President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, His Excellency Governor of Haryana, Sri Jagannath Pahadia, Honorable Chief Minister of Haryana, Sri Bupendra Singh Hutta, Honorable Union Minister for Human Resource Development and my friend, Mr. Pallam Raju, Chairperson of Jindal Group, Honorable MLA, Srimati Savitri Jindal, Honorable Speaker of Haryana Assembly, Sri Kuldeep Sharmaji, Honorable MP Sonipat, Sri Jitendra Malik, Dean of Jindal School of Management, University of Texas at Dallas, Mr. Pirkul Hassan, Provost, Indiana University, Professor Lauren Robel, Vice Chancellor, Jindal Global University, Professor Rajkumar, Registrar, Professor Murthy, Distinguished Vice Chancellors, Honorable Judges, Presidents, and Deans from various universities across the world and India, Faculty Members of Jindal Global University, dear students and friends. It is a privilege standing here before you and delivering this address in the august presence of the Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, who has honored us greatly by inaugurating this conference. He is an inspirational public figure for me and many generations of Indians. My other inspiration, my father, Sri O.P. Jindal, in whose memory this university has been established, used to say that education is perhaps the greatest gift that one can give to anyone. Such education should equip a student with skills, knowledge and exposure to intelligently handle national and global challenges. It is indeed a matter of concern that the Times Higher Education World University Rankings and QS rankings 2011-12 do not feature even a single Indian university in the list of top 200 universities of the world. This must be addressed in this international conference. We are privileged that the conference is being inaugurated by His Excellency the President of India, Sri Mukherjee, who has shown a remarkable interest in revamping and overhauling the higher education sector of India so that it becomes a bigger player in global intellectual development and stands shoulder to shoulder with the best in the world. Honorable Chief Minister of Haryana, Sri Huda, also shares this dream of nation building through building educational institutions of world class standards and has been a great source of support to our university since its inception. I am deeply grateful to him for his support and encouragement. The Minister of Human Resource Development, Sri Pallam Raju, has an 
very important mandate. His august presence here at this conference signifies his deep commitment to education and reforms in higher education. The importance of a robust higher education sector cannot be overemphasized. Quality higher education contributes to economic development and human development of a nation. When a nation substantially increases the number of students in its universities and transforms academic standards, it is more likely to see a surge in its economic growth. Like just now, Professor Raj told all of you that he first met me in 2006 with the idea of establishing a world-class global university. And he was introduced to me by Honorable Sri H.R. Bharatwaj, the then Law Minister. My father had only recently passed away in 2005. So in his memory, we committed to corporate philanthropy in promoting excellence in higher education and decided to start a university in his name. Universities must be transformed into sites of active learning and research. Launch pads for innovations and path-breaking ideas. One of the motivations in creating OP Jindal Global University is to overcome compartmentalization of knowledge. There is a dire need to promote more institutions where interdisciplinary knowledge creation is the aim. Higher education institutions in India must also make a serious effort at bringing global curriculum and contents to classrooms so that India's youth are competitive at an international level. OP Jindal Global University is sincerely working in this direction. The number of colleges offering world-class undergraduate education in India is very limited. Students who are not able to gain admission to the select elite and university, select elite colleges and universities in India are increasingly migrating abroad to pursue undergraduate degrees. This further emphasizes the need to create world-class facilities within India to enable students to, to choose from a range of options available to them. I am pleased to announce that the OP Jindal Global University has decided to establish the Jindal School of Liberal Arts and Humanities. It will start offering courses on the lines of US-based four-year courses and undergraduate programs from the next academic year. Besides shaping good students and engaging in high-quality research, the ideal university in India must also help build the capacities of our governmental and private sectors. The training programs our university has conducted for the Indian Police Service and Indian Administrative Service Officers in collaboration with reputed international universities are attempts to live up to this ideal of public service. Another reason for giving special attention to higher education, particularly in the Indian context, is to harness our demographic dividend, that is, higher proportion of population which is in the working age. This is seen as India's opportunity to catch up with China and exponentially increase our economic growth. Seizing, seizing this moment requires a multifaceted, interdisciplinary and professional approach to higher education. Providing quality education requires serious dedication and commitment on the part of higher education institutions. We have to revisit our education system to make it interdisciplinary and responsive to the bigger and deeper challenges. We have to learn from other countries, especially developing countries who have managed to churn out great universities. I am confident that this conference, with the blessings and guidance of His Excellency, the President of India, Honorable Chief Minister of Haryana, Sri Hoda, Honorable Minister of Human Resource Development, Sri Raju, and experts who have come from world over and they would be deliberating on how to create transformative public and private universities in India that would be amongst the, amongst the best in the world. It is indeed a noble endeavor and I wish this conference great success. Jai Hind. Thank you very much.
Chancellor Navi in general for your address. I now have the honor to request Professor Lauren Robel, Provost, Indiana University, United States of America, in Bloomington, to deliver the keynote address for this international conference. Mr. President, Honorable Chancellor, distinguished ministers, Mr. Governor, our Vice Chancellor, and our wonderful guests, faculty, staff, and students, I am deeply honored and humbled to return to this ambitious and growing university for a conference on such an important topic. The future of Indian universities is a topic that transcends national boundaries. Given India's importance to the world, it is a topic of great interest to the globe. And given the large number of extremely talented students who need access to excellent education, it is also a topic of deep moral profundity. I bring the greetings of my own president, Indiana University's Michael McRobbie, and his warm wishes for the success of this timely discussion. Indiana University has been proud to collaborate with OP Jindal Global University on a number of initiatives that are evidence of the timeliness of the theme of this conference, which focuses on comparative perspectives on higher education reform and what those 